follow the feet. Hi, welcome to my poetry school, and we are live on unrestricted stage. Yeah, good, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I am uh, Emily, and over here you see, uh, you know, you're on my left, you're on my right. Oh, yo, oh, you're on top of me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily, and this is Elaine Foster, and together we are My Poetry School, and we are so happy to be here on Unrestricted Stage because we today we are going to be doing a special interactive uh, storytelling segment for children. And I would like to introduce our two special guests. Everybody say hello to Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Wait. Hello. And our two other uh, two other guests, Iriel and Imran. Everybody say hi to Imran. Hi. Hi, hi Imran. You're gonna get the guest thing. No, both of us. Okay, not Imran. No, both of us. Both of us. Both. So, uh, in case you didn't know, in case you're wondering what we're doing, this is basically what my poetry school does. Uh, Sit down doing before the MCO kicked in. Uh, we do uh, drama classes for children and we start from the ages of four years old and upwards. Yeah, yeah, Elaine Foster? Yeah, we do and we miss going to class. So we have to do like everyone else to <laughs> take our classes online. Yes, so boys, I'm here now. Boys, can you do me a huge favor and mute your, no, your video? Need a brother Don't touch the mute button. Don't touch. Okay, as Don't you can the microphone at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. okay, thank you, boys. So as you can see, um mm. it is it is it is a challenge to um, navigate classes online. Oh, so you to drop class and you have must expect chaos. Mm. So <laughs> But then again, what is a drama class? What is a storytelling session without the kids? That's so what I did. This is why yes, I decided. A drama session without the kids. And we're going to try and be as interactive as possible with certain limitations and controlling the situation a little bit better. Um, oh, Emily, I brought my xylophone today. Yay! Yay! And I have my ukulele with me. Yeehaw! Yeehaw. By the way, oh. if you uh, want to support our work as arts educators, please, please, please consider donating um, to our cause. Emily and I, like so many freelance artists and educators, have not been able um, to go to work and have had all our gigs um, cancelled, especially us because we can't go to class, as you can see. And um, we would really, really appreciate that if you support our work um, and you like what we do, just drop a donation into Emily's account. I put it on the Facebook page um, comment box or literally come over to My Poetry School on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter or email us at poetrycafekl um, at gmail.com and take a class. We are running most of our classes online. What else do we do besides speech and drama, Emily? Oh, well, well, we, we do poetry for kids. We have, Lane has speak up, uh, lit, is it, um, what else do we have? Um, <laughs> Emily. That's right. Ready, Emily. Just try something that you like. Boys, I need you to please press the mute button. And ladies and gentlemen, mummies and daddies, these are the challenges of running an online class. Plus having children. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's get started with our demonstration. It's a very short class. What, what are we starting with, Emily? Okay, so um, for all of you who are joining us, especially the kids in the house, when I say kids, I mean from the ages of one to 99 years old, because everyone's a kid inside. So we're going to start our class today with a warm-up session. And what better way to warm up than to stand up? Stand up. And, okay, so I need all, the boy, all of you guys to please stand up. Please stand up. Very good. We're gonna do a warm up, and today we have chosen a very popular uh, song, a children's song. It's a classic song, it's an action song. It's a song most of us grew up uh, doing. 
And I want all the parents to join us as well. I think this is absolutely- Look at that, Ryan is scratching it out already. Yes, that's great. That's great. So before we start, let's, let's do a little bit of stretching. Let's stretch. Let's reach out for the skies. Ariel, Imran, come on, join us. Reach out for the skies. Now let's touch our toes. Let's go down. Touch our toes. You touching your toes? Okay. Touch your toes. Very good. We're gonna put our hands on our hips. Hands on your hips. And shake your hip to the left. Shake it to the right. Left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Now go round and round and round. Ryan's doing some head banging over there. Okay, let's follow Ryan. He's shaking. Oh, that's a good idea. Imagine you're in a blender and you're going round. What else spins you around? Does anybody know what else spins you around, Elaine? Spins you um, around. A washing machine spins oh you up. <laughs> washing machine. Imran and Let's see your washing machine. <laughs> okay. And okay. What do kids love and what do we love most? Singing songs. Singing songs. Let's go. Okay, so everybody, we are going to sing a song for you and we're going to do an action song and you know it because I know you remember this. So thanks, Ryan, for showing us your washing machine. That's amazing. So we're going to sing the Hokey Pokey. I'm going to play the song. If you know the, the words, sing along with us. Take a look at teacher Elaine. She's going to show you how to do the action. Boys, are you ready? Yeah? Okay. You put your right foot, oh, you put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, put your right hand in and you shake it all about. And do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your left hand in, you put your left hand in. Yes, please. While you go get that, I'm going to tell everybody. 
going on. Today, we're going to do the uh, retelling. We're going to do the story of a very classic, uh, famous childhood story. And it's called Little Red Riding Hood. A lot of you remember the story. This is a little bit, there's a little bit of a twist in the retelling of the story. And we will be uh, joined by our cast. We, uh, we have puppets to help us and telling our story today. Okay. Okay. Are you? I am going to take my spot. Goodbye, Emily. Bye bye. I can still see. Oh, there she goes. Right. I'm sure you all remember the story of Little Red Riding Hood, but ours is a little bit different. So let us begin. One day, there was a girl called Little Red Riding Hood. And obviously, she was called Little Red Riding Hood because she had a red hoodie. So it's the first time she was allowed outside since quarantine had started. It was, uh, they lifted the MCO a little bit. And so Little Red Riding Hood's mother asked her to send her grandmother a care package. Seeing that she was older and she was a more vulnerable person, she couldn't come out of the house. So, Little Red Riding Hood, Little Red Riding Hood. Yes, mother. Can you please send your, uh, your grandmother a care package? Okay. I'm sure she hasn't been out of the house in two and a half months and she's probably very hungry. Here you go. There you go. But you need to remember a couple of rules, okay? Okay. Make sure you go the long way around. Don't go through the padang, it's not safe. Number two, don't stop and talk to strangers, okay? Okay. And number three, I know I said there was only a couple, but there's a few. Always wear your mask, and keep appropriate distancing for our social distancing. Do you understand? It's a good three meters. Okay, mommy. One, two, three. Come One, here. two, three. Okay. Good luck, Little Red Riding Hood. Don't talk to strangers. Bye bye, mommy. So, off Little Red Riding Hood went. Of course, being a child, she couldn't be bothered taking the long way around. So instead, when she came to the Padang, she thought to herself, what's gonna happen to me? And decided to walk through the Padang instead. So she walked and she walked, picking flowers as she went. She obviously didn't come across anybody because you know, most people are at home, it's the MCO. It would be crazy to come out right now. Even if you know there aren't that many cases, we don't want a second wave. Suddenly, she spoke too soon, sorry, she thought too soon. She saw someone lurking behind one of the tall grasses. It was the big bad wolf. And he said, Hello, little girl. What is your name? I, I'm called Little Red Riding Hood. So, even though the wolf was a stalker and he was trying to get information from a strange girl for bad reasons, he still kept the appropriate social distancing of three meters. He knew better. Say, little girl, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to grandmother's house. Mm. He asked her where grandmother lived. Where does grandmother live, little girl? Oh, grandmother, she lives over there. You have to cross the drain, go past the ditches, and you see that bush over there, you have to 
take a U-turn, climb up the ladder, climb down the ladder. See that rope over there? You take a left turn and then you come back over here, then you swim through the river and then grandmother's house is actually just over there. So the wolf wrote down a map. Very quickly, he drew a map because the directions are very complicated. And then he bid Red Riding Hood adieu. Okay, little girl, I'm gonna go to Red Riding Hood. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna go home now. You take care. How about you pick some old flowers over there? And um, maybe you could bring grandma a little bit more extra pretty flowers. Wow. Well, Gives me more time to go and run to everybody's house because I'm a wolf and I'm hungry and I like to eat little girls and grandmother. Okay, so clearly Little Red Riding Hood broke so many rules. First of all, she took a shortcut through the padang. Then she stopped to talk to strangers. And I'm pretty sure that social distancing measuring, they got closer and closer, was not appropriate. At least they both had masks. Anyway, is that even a wolf? I'm not sure. So, while Little Red Riding Hood was busy pluck, pluck, plucking flowers for grandmother, the wolf ran to grandma's house. And he ran through the padang. And he ran through the padang some more. Until he came to grandma's house. So he's flying for When he reached Grandma's house, he knocked on the door. And Grandma said, Come in. Wait, Grandma, don't you ask who's at the door before you let people in? Let's try that again. Who is it? And the wolf said, Oh, it's... <clears throat> It's me, Little Red Riding Hood, your granddaughter. So obviously, Grandma was both deaf-ish, so she couldn't really tell if it was her granddaughter or not. And then, having let her in, she's a bit blur about the quarantine rules. She was just too desperate and very happy to see her granddaughter. So she opened the door and unknowingly let the wolf into the house. The wolf suddenly pounced on her and pushed her into the cupboard and locked her inside. Then he took, off, he took grandmother's nightgown, pretended to be the grandmother and got back into bed. This was all his cunning plan. Now, most of us would probably be like, no, duh, it's obvious that that is the wolf slash know what that is, and not the grandmother. But we live in strange times. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Come. <clears throat> Come in. No, stop. I know you're a stalker, wolf thing, dressed up as grandmother, but you still have to ask who it is first. Let's do it again. Who is it? And grandmother. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. I come bearing goodies. Mommy, Mama sent some nice food and fruit for you. We heard you were not well. I'm so glad that they were meeting the rules of the three meters distance between them and wearing a face mask to make sure that they didn't, you know, expose each other to risk. Then oh, really? Riding Hood noticed something weird about Grandma. Why, Grandma, what great big eyes you have. Oh, all the better to see you with, my dear. Hmm, why, Grandma, what great big nose you have. Mm. All the better to see you with, 
to smell you with, my dear. Hmm. Why, Grandma, what great big ears you have. All the better to cheer you with, my dear. Hmm. Why, Grandma, what great big teeth you have. And suddenly, the wolf jumped up, threw off his grandmother's garb, and he jumped on Little Red Riding Hood. Roar! And Little Red Riding Hood began to scream. Scream! Help! Help! Meanwhile, outside in the padang, there was another stranger lurking. The woodcutter, who had been out and about doing his daily exercise since the MCO had been lifted slightly. Obviously, his exercise was to chop down wood, which is why he had an ax. And he heard the screaming, and he knew exactly where it was coming from. So he ran to the house. Run, 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 run. Help, help me, somebody help me. Ah! Burst through the door. He jumped onto the wolf and he sliced and diced that wolf. Huh, 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 and told the wolf was dead. Yay! Oh, wow, thank you for saving my life. More brutal. Then he went to the cupboard to release poor grandmother, who was still alive, but had been locked in the cupboard. And oh, Grandmother and Red Riding Hood were reunited. Oh, thank you, Mr. Woodcutter, for saving our lives. Yay, we are saved. Oh. And live happily ever after. The end. Yay. Let's get some feedback from the boys. Hey. Hey, Ryan. Red Riding Hood, Little Red Riding Yeah, it's fun. And it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It is amazing. <laughs> amazing. I can hear parents in the background feeding mm -hmm. lines to their children, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who do you like best? The wolf, the grandma, I, or I like the, the grandma? You like the wolf? I, I, I like the grandma. Why? She wasn't very clever. Oh, maybe I like Little Riding Hood. That's cool. Okay. Okay, so we, our time's almost up. Because I don't cook a tail. How about we do a little bit? Because the woodcutter saved li Little Red Riding Hood life. Ryan, do you think, can you like pretend to be the wolf? What does the wolf look like? How, like, how would you act it out in your body? Uh, Oh. Ah, oh, look, I don't know if that's a yawn or if Iroh is actually acting out. Ah! Okay, that's it. How about grandmother? Can we pretend to be grandmother? Oh, uh, what's this? Is that a zombie? Emily, teacher Emily, what is grandmother look like? So, so grandmother is an old woman. And you know what they say, when you grow older, your body starts to bend a little bit, your bones go brittle. The older people can walk a little bit slower and they bend. Well, right? no, I don't know about that. I've seen pictures on Instagram of 100 year olds and they're buff. So I think we need to break the myth that old people are bent over with brittle bones. Exactly, start exercising now and don't stop. <laughs> Ryan, who are you being? I who think that's that? a zombie, Emily. Let's have a quick game of zip zap before we end the session. Okay. So uh, before we end, uh, guys, kids at home, you can pick up uh, a character that you like and you can act it out. Find me the character that in the story that you like. I love the woodcutter. You know, the woodcutter is big and strong. Cuts wood, 
So you can practice doing the I actions at the wood. Okay, so stay at home and do the actions. But now, let's move into our last Ow. I'm dying. All right, guys. Last thing, let's play zip zap. I will. And Ryan, let's play zip zap really quickly. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to clap and I'm going to name the person. And then uh, that person's going to name someone else. Okay, here goes. Okay, now you can listen. Ryan. Teacher Ellen. Ryan. I will. Emily. I will. Imran. Auntie Emily. Imran. Ryan. Teacher Ellen. Okay, thank you very much, boys, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, on Unrestricted Day for joining us. We are My Poetry School. Please like us on our page. We have online classes for children, youths, and adults as well. So check, out, check us out and uh, feel free to uh, contribute if you'd like to help some artists out during this MCO period. Thank you very much, uh, Teacher Elaine. Okay. Anything you want to Yeah? Don't forget to donate and don't forget considering donating to other arts and educators. Even though content is online, it does not mean that it all should be free. All of us still need to make a living. And I know you all love the arts. You watch television, you listen to music, and this comes at the great skill and cost and resources of, of talented people who deserve to be paid for their work. But thank you, Tina, and thank you, Unrestricted Stage. Bye-bye, everybody. And bye-bye uh, to our wonderful guests, Iril, Imran, and Ryan. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you next time. <laughs>